This is Louisa, my favourite model, or at least she's my favourite when it comes to making these instructional videos. And we're photographing her now against a plain white background. Now it doesn't look white in the video, it looks grey, and the reason it doesn't look white is simply because there isn't enough light reaching the background. So this video explains and shows you how to get the background looking white, if you like white backgrounds. Now what we have here is not one subject, Louisa, it's two subjects because she is the front subject and the background is the back subject. So what we're going to do now is to light the background separately because it's a separate subject in its own right, therefore it needs separate lighting. So what we need to do is to light our model and our background separately and we need more light in the background than we have on our subject or our model because we want the background to be overexposed. Now there's several different ways of doing this and one of them of course is to use the Encarta background reflector but there are other ways too and one good method is to use reflective umbrellas to light the background. Now what we've got to use here is the white reflective umbrella, not the silver, not the gold, it must be the white one. And we also need two of them and we arrange it at an angle so the light from it is coming like this and bouncing off over that side. So we take some meter readings, that's 11, F11 at decimal 5. F11 decimal 4, F11 decimal 5. So, to all intents and purposes, it's evenly lit. An important thing here is to get the lighting even. Now, I could, of course, take measurements lower down, higher up, and all the rest of it. I don't need to for a simple headshot. If I was photographing a group of people, I'd take quite a lot of readings to get it accurately spot on. Now that's just for reference, we're not actually going to set that on the camera because the camera is going to be set to suit the lighting on the model and we haven't put any light on the model yet. What we're going to do is we're going to light the model to read F11. Now that's just half a stop difference. The background is going to be half a stop overexposed relative to the model and that half a stop is just about enough to get it right. Where you see people saying on the web that you need two stops or three stops over exposure in the background, that is nonsense, and I'll show you why. So here's our model, Louisa, with no light on her whatever. Let's put a light on her, and just to make it simple, I'm going to use a softbox directly in front of her and above. Nice simple lighting and quite flattering lighting as well but for now I'm going to turn the light off on the model and I'm going to take a shot of the model with the camera set to F11 which is the lighting power that we're going to set on the model in a moment and the reason for that is we want to see exactly what we're getting in terms of exposure of the background which is half a stop over and we want to see whether that has had any effect on the outline, the fine detail of the model, which in this case, and in fact in most cases, is the hair. We want to see whether it has damaged the edges of the hair. Now what we've got here is close to being a perfect silhouette of the model. You can see detail in the hair, and as you can see the hair is pretty well untouched by the lights reflected off of the background. That is partly because we've got the right amount of light in the background that is, we've got half a stop more exposure, which means that by the time the light has reflected off the background onto the back of our model, there isn't enough of it to cause any damage. Also, by lighting the background the way we have, with lights each going at an angle, the light is reflecting off towards the sides, away from the camera, which causes far less problems than if it's bouncing straight off the background, which causes image damage, degradation to the fine detail. 